Hello team, welcome back. Sofa Table episode eight. Um, in the last episode, we glued up the legs um, and now I've moved on to finishing the tabletop. So the glue up's complete. You can see we've got the L shape there. I've taken it outside and even though I'm outside, if you see all that dust coming off my belt sander there, um, you can see it's worth wearing your breathing protection and your ear protection and everything else. Buddy the dog's in the background, just hanging out in the shed, just checking the glue ups, because they're in there and he's just saying, yep, yeah, they're fine. And I am ripping into this um, surface because what I found is that it's bowed slightly. Um, and also the two, the two pieces that I glued, yeah, they were married up particularly well. But that's all part of it. Perhaps I should have done the glue up before I sort of tried surfacing it. Again, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm figuring it out as I go along. Um, cup of tea and, oh no, a bit of string. Ah, right, yes. So what I've done there is I've drawn my curve because I want to curve this corner. Jigsaw comes out. I don't get to play with my jigsaw that often. Uh, so cutting it off in sections, trying to get as close to that line that I drew with my bit of string and my pencil. And happy with that. So we continue, as Pete Tong would say. Change the belt. New belt, still pretty rough. And I'm just, well, I was going to say, just going over the corners. But it was moving around everywhere. So take it indoors, in the clamp, trying to get that nice rounded edge. Um, changed it to a orbital sander because the belt sander was just too aggressive and just trying to shape it and I do I think I do remember I mean this was a few weeks ago now I do remember that um, I got a little bit panicky because it was a bit lumpy but in the end I got it to a good curve which you'd actually have to look pretty closely to realize it wasn't sort of machined so I was happy with that good job me um, so again, out with the belt sander, sorry, out with the orbital sander. Um, took off my mask, don't know why, probably a bit silly. And just work him away over the top with probably, I can't remember really, maybe it might have been 80 grit. Hmm, what did my belt sander do? That might have been 80 grit. So this is somewhere 100, 120, something like that. So by no means this is the final, the final sanding. So pencil marks on. If you've seen any sanding videos, put your pencil marks on so you can see where you've been. So just scribble all over it with a pencil. Don't press too hard. You don't want to make dents that you've then got to sand out. So just lightly over the top with the pencil, scribble, 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 and then just sand until all that uh, pencil mark is gone. And it takes time and it's noisy and it's dusty and it's not particularly exciting. But that said, oh, and because it's so noisy, you can't really listen to music or anything. But that said, the results are worth it. So even as you're going over and you're sort of feeling a bit bored and a bit like, Ugh, you're thinking, oh yeah, but look how that nice that is and look how nice that is. And So obviously you went for my lunch there. Forgot to turn the camera off now. We're indoors and I'm using my large router to put the chamfer on. Not clamping and it's moving a bit. So now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking you should be clamping that down. But anyway, I'm managing to do it. Put the chamfer on with my chamfer bit, changing the bits over. And now this is the round over bit, um, which I'm just having a practice on because I want to set the height so that you get a nice round over without leaving a ridge. So that's what all this faffing around is, is me checking the height. Now I'm happy with it. Back to the tabletop. Um, I am clamping this down, finding a little bit of wood to put under, there we go. Um, and just because I don't want it to move. Um, I need a little hand router, little edging router, which I might be getting soon. All right, so that's the routing done. That's come out quite nicely, so I've got a chamfer on that side and then a round on top. It's a really nice edge. I think I'm pleased with that. Yeah. 
I'm going to take it outside now and just do the final sanding. That's actually, that's actually, you know, if I do say so myself, that's a really nice bit of table, isn't it? He's going to like that. So, back outside now, orbital sander, scribbling. I held it up to the camera what I'm on. I think this is probably 150 now. And um, that's the underside. You can actually see the scribbles there. You can see as I go across, you can watch them disappear. Um, trying to sort of be even handed about it. You don't want to be concentrating too much on one area, but you know, just, just sand a thing. Not bothering with dust collection <laughs> because I'm too out, I'm outside, so it doesn't really matter. Now go to the edges. Um, as you do the routing, um, does give you a quite a nice finish but you do have to take off um, you know little ridges and little bits and pieces um, little, sometimes you get little scorch marks you can see just there on the corner there was a little dark patch which should be a little scorch mark you just receive me removing another one there and just trying to take off the sharp edges because this is an indoor piece of furniture you don't want to be snagging anything and just making it it's making it tactile isn't it making it nice to sort of touch that's the beauty of a nice piece of wood. Spraying the water now to make that grain pop. So any of the grain that's led down, you spray it with water and as it dries, it stands up. So then you can knock it back, and take off the little fuzzy bits. Um, so again, scribbling on, removing. This is the top of the table. So I want to make this really nice. Um, getting to the point where I just, you know, Oh, getting really knackered, but you want to do a good job. That's the thing I always find is I just want to do it more and make it nice for the person that's going to have it. Going around again, higher grip, making the edges nice because it's, it's those things people do notice those things. So, um, yeah, you want to get it nice. Wetting it again, flipping it over. It's not dry on that side, so crack out the old heat gun again. Love my heat gun. Just drying things off. La, da, da, da. And this last one, so this will be, I can't remember, this is the bottom one. I, I can't remember the grit, sorry. This last one, I haven't done pencil marks because I just it's just a light whisk over and I don't want to have to grind out pencil marks, but also I don't want to risk leaving any on because if you miss one and apply the finish it's there forever so the last pass no pencil marks that's what i do anyway and again look this is the last pass for the top and it is just a whisk over you can see i'm going a lot faster um, and i'm going to now apply some finish oh another whisk over i've lost count now But yeah, so applying the finish is coming up. And now we get to my favorite bit, which is when all the hard work becomes apparent and you can see the final product when you apply the finish. There was some debate over what sort of finish I was gonna use. Um, I did three test pieces with various finishes and guess what? The winner is Danish oil every time. Danish oil um, and the way I like to put it on goes against the way that the great Paul Sellers likes to put it on he says put it on very sparingly and blah 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 I've just boshed it on maybe maybe that's because he puts it on he was doing like vertical legs and stuff and you don't want it to run but when I'm doing a flat table just bosh it on I actually did way too much here and I'm trying to get it back in the bottle there not very successfully but lint free cloth bosh it on buff it off so you are taking off, you know, everything that's not needed and giving it a good work in, especially on the edges. They take a while because they've got to soak it up. It goes into the end grain, doesn't it? Um, so giving it a good old buff, getting it all nice and even, looking down it, um, looking at the, the bit of um, epoxy that I put in there, which has actually gone transparent now, which is quite nice, really. Um, and just waffling on about it, really. And straight away, it's dry enough to just flip over on that blanket there. I'm using the blanket because I want to protect 
protect it now from any harshness. And this is the top. <clears throat> Got the amount right this time. So it wasn't any, well, not enough, uh, not very much excess. Um, you got you got to be careful of drips down the side because if you've got a thick bit that you miss um, then uh, that can cause like a drip effect on the edge so you've got to be careful of that um, just making sure it really work the edges as well because like I said the end grain takes a bit more a bit more of it to get the oil to go in right I think that's pretty darn tasty. So I'm going to put that somewhere to cure overnight at least. Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to do the slats. Yeah, that'll be it. In this case, putting it all together, that'll be done. Thanks for watching.